So just to just to let Pete know, um, we're glad to have you here. These meetings are always open to the public. Um, we have on our agenda um, sort of a 10 to 15 minute slot in the early part of the meeting to ask questions or whatever, but people are also invited to be part of the meeting. Um, and if anybody has questions along the way or comments, we're glad to have people just sort of raise their hand and comment. Um, so just as a formality, Pete, do you have any questions at the moment for us? Mute yourself. Volume all the way down. Okay. We're just adjusting technology. So is Pete able to be seen and heard or? Um, if you'd like him, I can promote him to a panelist. Just pick him in. Why not? Just Pete. Pete, oh no, you'll be here in a second. Okay. So just um, in terms of agenda review, does anyone have any comments about the agenda? Um, things to add or move around? Uh, Madam Chair, I... You let me know when I'm gonna do that. Is there something in addition? No, 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 it's just okay. the date on the agenda. No, no, the, there, that's been responded okay. to. Yep, okay. all, yep. I will, so I'm gonna do that. Um, hello, Pete, glad to have you with us. <laughs> um, Pete's on mute this morning. <laughs> Yeah, that's yes, all right. There we go. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Terrific. Um, so just in terms of agenda review, um, Hack has let me know about one little problem. The agenda is actually correct as posted on the town website, but the date on that agenda is not, but it is now. Um, it does say March 13th today. Um, yeah. That's just a reflection of your scatterbrained committee chair. <laughs> it's been corrected. Um, anything additional that anybody has to add or say about the agenda before I put my two cents worth in? All right. Um, I would like to just put something in right after the minutes under the administrative items, Roman numeral three. I would like to insert a bullet between the third and the second and third bullet. And that item is going to be sharing portions of the matrix when requested by town committees, departments, et cetera. All right, let us start with the, the number one bullet under administrative items. Um, welcome to Robin Brooks. Um, Thank you, Susan. Yeah, and I think what we wanna do is be able to just all of us briefly introduce ourselves because this is Robin's first time with us and then Robin can introduce herself to us. Um, and what I'm looking at is is great. Angela's with us, and I'm, I know Rick. Rick is unable to attend today. Work commitment has intervened, um, but I think everybody else is here. Um, yeah. So why don't I start? And um, just in terms of you know orienting ourselves around the comprehensive plan. Um, I served partway along on the comprehensive plan update committee and had such a good time. I volunteered for this endeavor. Um, I live off the Forside Road on Twin Pond Road. And um, yeah, I've been in Topsom for about nine years, going on nine years. I grew up in Auburn. But the time between Auburn and coming back to Topsom was mostly lived in New York City. 
right in New York City and a little bit of London. Um, but I always wanted to move back to Maine and finally got remarried, which sort of allowed me to exhale and move back to Maine. Um, and I'm having great fun living in Topsom and being on this committee and getting to know both members of the committee and members of the public. Um, my background is um, fundraising and social work. I am now retired and pouring all of my energy into this. <laughs> well, not all, but most. Um, so let me go to my right, the Joe. Uh, Joe Feely, I've been in Thompson about nine years. I was on the update committee with Susan. Um, I think Susan has a perverse sense of what's fun. So, uh, there we are. Um, I've lived in Maine my entire life, uh, as I think I said, nine years in Topsom, um, and uh, I'm an architect by training, and uh, spent my life doing that, and uh, I'm really excited about the prospect of uh, the implementation of, of this uh, of this comp plan. I, I really like the work our consultants are doing. Um, I, I think it's very exciting. Cool. So, why don't you go next? Uh, Andy Muncy. I uh, have been in Thompson for 12, almost 13 years now. I uh, moved here from Bodenham originally, but I grew up in Brunswick. Uh, so, this is kind of like home. I've got a lot of family nearby. I have two uh, teenagers in uh, high school. Um, live over on Anthony Avenue. Uh, I'm an architect, um, and I'm currently very busy with the uh, committees because, in addition to this committee, I'm on the planning board and the historic district commission. So, okay, and let's go on to the virtual group, um, Angela. Remembering to unmute. <laughs> Um, I'm Angela Twitchell. I live here on Main Street in Topsom, and I have since 1999. I have been on several town committees over the years, um, and I'm really excited to be on this comp plan implementation committee. In my day job, I'm the executive director of the Brunswick Topsom Land Trust, and I'm also raising four kids here in Topsom. So I have a lot of love for the town, and I think the comp plan and its implementation can have a great effect on the town's future. Thank you. And Andy Sturgeon. Yes, uh, good. I guess it's still afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, I've been in Topsom about five years. I manage an engineering company in Yarmouth, Maine. I sit on the TDI board as well as the CPIC board. Um, I've been in the land consulting business for 42 years. I was former chair of the planning board in Bangor and had a business in Bangor for 30 years too. So I've been around the business a long time and, and very excited about the opportunities that we have in Topsom and looking forward to moving forward with the committee and seeing our results in a couple of years probably. <laughs> <laughs> that moving timeline yeah i know okay does is that all of us um on the committee i think so and um turn it over to robin to introduce yourself and however you want you want to do it yeah thank you susan um it's great to be here um i'm robin brooks i live at i on ivanhoe drive in town and we've been there for about 24, say 25, going on 25 years, but we've been in town for 30, and I've been in Maine for the better part of my life. I was born and raised in New Jersey. Um, and I'm trained as a visual artist and art educator, and uh, in, in that capacity, I've done a lot of, um, I've had a great interest in the built environment and educating children to be aware of and to really respect our uh, the history of our you know, uh, built environment. and. Um, and so it's um, with that interest in um, seeing our town grow and um, in a way that really respects um, both the natural world and also the human needs, you know, that 
this is just a wonderful opportunity to participate and I'm just really happy to be here. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Robin. Um, and I know you know Mark. Yes, we've met. Great. Yep. But you may not know, do you know half the spelling? No. Um, introduce yourself just to. Um, I'm half spelling. I'm the director of planning for the town. Um, I have been in Thompson since last August when I took up this position. Uh, prior to that, I spent my whole career running planning departments all across Canada um, and worked as a private sector consultant for about 10 years. Um, so the arc of my career has included a lot of uh, plan development and implementation. Um, and I also have a master's degree in urban regional planning. Okay, I think we're all acquainted to that extent. <laughs> so um, that's the update on membership with two additional thoughts that I, or pieces of information that I'd like to share with um, the committee. Um, there is um, someone who has attended several meetings. Um, her name is Margaret Williams. Um, I reached out to her, sort of inspired by Robin coming on board, um, thinking it's probably a good idea to bring on all the newbies together. Um, and so Margaret actually told me, now she's going to be on the spot, that she's going to apply um, to be on the Comp Plan Implementation Committee. And just this morning, I heard through Joe that... Pete Bono, who is with us today, is interested in join, joining. Um, Pete went ahead and checked out the plan on the town website, and um, that didn't put him off. So <laughs> he's interested, and uh, we're glad to have him actually be part of this meeting today. Um, I always figured anybody who can stick through a few meetings is somebody we want to have on board. So hopefully that process of being or the, applying, um, apparently Rosewood is on vacation for a week. Almost two. Almost but two weeks. So in the send meantime, it to, send, send it to Mark Waltz. Send the application, either send or bring in and give the application to Mark Waltz. Um, yeah. And yeah, so that takes care of um, F and once those select board um, interviews and appointments have been made, we will be at capacity. We will have no vacancies, and I can't tell you how happy that will make me. Um, so the next little item is the one that I stuck in. I didn't want to go ahead and just do this, although I, I, I'm assuming that this is going to be an absolutely okay thing to do. I'm going to meet tomorrow virtually with a member of the Bicycle Pedestrian Committee who reached out and said, could we meet? Of course, I said yes. And he asked whether or not we have um, a, a, a document that we that we could actually share that he could then manipulate um, for the committee's purposes. Um, and I'm not sure, but I think I can manage to do that, to copy that section of the matrix, which will be uh, streets for people, all of those goals and who has the lead on what, um, and share that with them so that they can actually use that as part of their process. Does anybody have any issues with our doing that? Just copying that one piece and sharing that. Actually, I wish every committee and department would make that request. Uh, no issues, Madam Chair, but just a, a question with uh, the change in membership of the responsibility centers migrated mm -hmm. um, in other ways. I'm not sure what. Oh, you mean. well, um, my recollection is that, you know, a couple members were responsible for liaising the various departments yep. and yep. all that. Yeah. So. Is, is that sort of been modified as well? That has been slightly modified, but the full shifting of that, thank you, Hap, 
the full shifting hasn't been done because we have we now have one new member and we're you know anticipating very soon having two additional members okay. so it doesn't make sense to me i don't like redoing work <laughs> i don't know about you but um angela has gone through and and sort of updated the assignment sheet but some changes are forthcoming and I'd, I'd like to make those all at once and to do that hopefully um, in early April, my hope is that the April 6th select board meeting is where new people, new members of our committee will be appointed and thereafter um, conversations with them or simply um, dictatorial <laughs> assignments will be made and, um, and we'll move forward. And those will be, and, and I think people need to be oriented about the Google Drive and how to get into those documents. There's a wealth of stuff in there. Um, thanks to Raya, we're indebted to her for um, setting us up that way. And uh, and last month was Raya's last meeting. So we're, we're glad to be having new members. So just let me make sure I can um, see any hands if there is any objection to um, my sharing that particular chunk of the matrix. No problems, all good shaking of the head, no problem. Thank you. Okay, so um, of course I put that in, in the wrong place, doesn't matter. Minutes of the January 9th meeting. Is that what I'm trying? No, it's the February meeting, Susan. Um, February 9th. Yeah. Well, the February when? The heck was it? Probably February 13th. 13th. It was February 13th. And I did distribute, I hope I distributed the right document, um, the, the February 13th minutes. I distributed a PDF of that. Um, and if anybody has any comments, suggestions, changes, see Mr. Munsey. <laughs> no changes, okay. So um, assuming there are no changes, I will just assume that this, the minutes as presented are approved for February 13th. Okay. So just reminding everyone that the next workshop session, which will be really important, we had a very productive hour and a quarter with Leslie Oberholzer and Kirk Bishop on the 21st of February. Um, I neglected to lengthen our meeting time, but we did all stay 15 minutes extra, but we have more work to do. It was a very productive session. Our monthly workshop is on the third Tuesday, at four o'clock. It's normally an hour, but for these kinds of things, I let everybody know in the meeting announcement email that I'd like to lengthen that. That works well for Leslie and Kirk. Um, and just, just let me know if there's anybody here today who is not able to make that meeting, please just let us know. I'm not able to make it. You? Yes. Okay. Traveling for work. Okay. Not. 321. Okay, anyone else not able to make it on next Tuesday, a week from tomorrow, or till 5.30? And those, just for Pete's edification, those meetings are always open, um, and a, an agenda will be on the town website. Okay, so that's that. So let's go into the um, CPIC work plan. We've sort of worked this over a little bit in, I, I don't know if it was one meeting or two meetings, but um, we're really, we're looking at the last three pages of it. The first three pages are sort of setting the stage um, context for our work forward. And I went over this and kind of made changes that 
have come up in our meetings um, and went a little bit beyond that. So I think it's fair to like turn this over to folks. I'm assuming that people have at least peeked at it. <laughs> Um, and if there's anything, I think it's, my sense of this is it's every bit as detailed, if not more so, than the work plan that started us off. Um, and, you know, a work plan is, I think, not meant to be so detailed that it's prescriptive at every stage, but um, sort of keeps us on track if we find ourselves in the ditch. So if anybody has looked at this and has anything that you either would like to add or change, please have at it. And if you would like it to be open on the screen, I think we are ready to do that. Would it be helpful to screen share? I think it would be helpful. Do you? <laughs> I think it's helpful too. I did look at it, but it seems like it was a long time ago now, so it would be helpful to me. Okay, so I think Mark is on that. He's zeroing in. So we're is looking. That's what I want. See that's the one right there. You've got it. Almost like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Just very surprising. So scroll down to page four. Start of page four. Yep, right there, right there. All right. So folks who are in Zoom land can see this very well. And Robin, have you actually great? That's the thing that I concluded my public school career during the, at the beginning of COVID because I learned to navigate swimming school. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks. You have to give me tips. But... Uh, so, um, what we can do is just sort of take our time and scroll, you know, glance at this. If anybody um, has anything to, you yeah. know, let's dig into it and talk about it. If it's not clear, we want it to be clear. Um, Madam Chair, we, Mark, if we could just zoom back down a bit. The top of the yeah. yeah. So it says uh, the subject heading is prior prioritize comp plan objectives and implementation strategies. I I think it might be helpful to have some kind of line item about the public consultation process. That is coming up. Half that's this is public consultation. We have a whole separate document. If you okay. notice on the agenda, there is a community engagement communication framework agenda item number okay. five coming up after okay. this. Okay. Um, and some of that will be um, you know will come up in this document, but um all of us are as eager as you. <laughs> to get into this, but we can't really get into this until we've wrapped up some yeah. aspects of the recode. Um, and we're looking forward to some wrapping, um, which I, you know, I hope will happen next Tuesday afternoon. But I guess a, you know, a related question would be, is the consultation process a priority? The public consultation yes. process? Yes. Yes. Okay. But as it, you know, it came, it was listed in our um, um, first work plan that once there is a, 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 a completed work product mm -hmm. that is ready for sharing, mm -hmm. that's the moment. Mm -hmm. And there's another phase of, um, there's all kinds of letting town residents know what's going on that's going to come up in item five on the agenda. Okay. Okay. So any other thoughts here as we um, 
you can talk about the big, big, um, bold items or the little items. One of the important things to note, and you know, we'll need to be checking in with the consultants on this is, you know, we, we've sort of looked at the time frame that we're working with now, knowing how, um, I mean, we're well into our third year now. So I think all of us who have been doing this together have a little bit of a realistic sense of the pace of how things move forward. Um, and so, and there's been some delay because of, you know, some staff changes in the planning department. And so we're looking at the town meeting 2024. Um, and it says November 2024, and that is wrong. It should be the. Mm, I was wondering. Yeah. It, but although that I think, I don't know when um, getting on the warrant is determined. Is it kind of February, January, February? Yeah, by February, definitely by March. Right. I don't want to have things finalized. So. And and I, I guess I'm thinking about the the body that's going to recommend that it be on the warrant will be the planning board. So um, having, yeah, it's just about getting these dates kind of lined up. Um, yeah, in, in the fall of 2023, we will be looking at those public sessions for warrant items in terms of um, hearings and public sessions. So let's scroll down a little bit more. Um, right, so uh, yeah, I, uh, policies are usually associated with the comp plan itself. Where are you looking? Uh, um, item B, right yeah, there at the top. Yeah. yeah. Um, so recode is really about implementation of those policies. So uh, just suggesting that you know maybe you might want to substitute the term regulations or something like that in place of policies because the zoning code itself doesn't typically include policy um, items. It includes regulations that implement the policies in the comp plan. Well, my understanding of the 2019 comp plan is that there are nine big ideas. Mm -hmm. And each of those nine big ideas has multiple strategies. And some of those call for new policies, in fact. Many so, of the strategies are not related to zoning changes. That's right. Yeah, it goes beyond the land use zoning. Well, then where is it being picked up outside of the recode? Well, that's exactly what this um, item, small letter B, says, which is beyond recode. Okay. Apart from recode. All right. All right, I, I, I get it now. Okay. Um, and one of the things that we talked about is having, you know, some sort of larger group meetings on occasion, maybe twice a year, not to burden anybody, but to bring some staff um, stakeholders, committee chairs and things together to talk about some of these things where it, some of the comp plan vision actually overlaps a few different departments and committees, boards. So I think all of these items, and you know, under C and then little Roman numeral five, 
recruitment of additional members. We are ahead of the game, gang. <laughs> How about that? Check. So moving on to meet with stakeholders to review and get feedback on implementation strategies. Um, and just remember, a lot of this was picked up and added to from our first work plan. Um, I did some combining here where um, this is exactly where all of the members of the committee will be on their own time frame, but encouraged to go ahead and move ahead um, to meet with the committees that they're assigned to. Those assignments are going to be sort of um, shifting a little bit through um, probably early April is my guess. Maybe they'll be set and presented for your approval um, at the April meeting is um, what makes sense to me. And um, last time we met, we added a few uh, non-town organizations, um, BTLP, Six Rivers, NEMBA, and if there are others, we're always, if, if this is a, you know, a work in progress document, we can add there if other organizations um, should be added. In NC residents, um, in addition to, oh, 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 sorry. that's right. Oh, yeah, there we go. In addition to biannual or as needed updates to the select board um, to do, you know, little articles or updates in the crier, other outlets, um, and the committee will stay attuned to what's needed to keep residents informed. Um, you know, this will come up more under the communications community engagement piece, but just to let folks know that I have reached out to the crier. Um, Charlie and I are in touch and I have drafted kind of 90% of an article that um, I think would be right for the crier. Um, don't worry, nothing will go anywhere without your approval. <laughs> But just to let you know where it is, it's the, the rough draft is 90% done and the, the key is in the editing, which I'll go back and work on and hopefully get out to everybody by the end of the week. And I see Andy Sturgeon's hand. Yeah, I just, um, if you could slide back up just a little bit, want to, um, right there, non-town organizations. I just yeah. want to make sure that we, because I know that Jim Howard and I met with Leslie and Kurt just in general, um, and I think this might even be covered somewhere else, but I just want to make sure that non-town organizations might be um, landowners, for example, of many parcels in, in the community that might be interested, we might be interested in hearing their views, and I just want to make sure that avenue's out there somewhere. I, I do know that the meeting, the initial meeting we had with Leslie and Kurt was very enlightening. It just, you know, it helped it helped Jim Howard understand the process a lot better. And I, I want to make sure we have that avenue somewhere in here. Right. I think um scroll up just a tiny bit more, Mark. Yeah. Stakeholders. So Maybe that's something. We could right. add that yeah, up before residents. I mean, it would be residents would include that, but right. But we could call that out and say, which makes sense. I think. And it makes sense to have some overlap between the work plan and the community engagement communications plan. Um, that might be something we want to put in here. I mean, so, you could change the term residents to property owners. And that yeah, would yeah. come as every. And what we often call it is simply stakeholders. Sure. And then that covers the. So change thing. residents to stakeholders? Is that what you're um, No, we need residents right there. But if you put um, after after B, um, add another item. So it should auto. Yeah, there you go. Automatic change. Um, stakeholder outreach. 
Um, I know we had, I think there were three different stakeholder meetings at least. Um, and I think those were very helpful and there will come a time when we, when I think it would be helpful to get that discussion in small groups. Um, maybe just say small group in person or virtual um, for discussion and feedback. Yeah, you know, Susan, I do know that Dan Catlin was very appreciative of the meeting he attended at the library a year and a half ago, I think is when yep. we had, had that one. And I know that I just want to make sure that some of those key people that are presenting projects in front of the planning board all the time, you know, I, I'd hate to just say, well, you didn't you didn't show up. I want to make sure that we reach out to them a little bit because they're key players in the community. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we'll talk about how to do that as, you know, um, as we get closer to actually having those things. Um, I, I know that we will have a big in-person, well, I don't know how big, I hope it's big, in-person um, open house around the whole recode project. Um, how, what that will look like, I don't quite know. <laughs> Um, but when we had the October 2021 rollout presentation of um, the project direction memo, um, and we had that sort of morning session for folks to come and hear about it, um, I think that we need to do that again. So thanks for that, Andy. Okay, that has been added. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Susan, can I ask a question? Of course. It, um, when it says non-town organizations and we just give two examples, do we, do you think we need examples? Um, you know, that just sort of got added in the course of a meeting. If I think what, what I hear you suggesting is that unless we have more examples, it's better to have none. Well, it just feels a little weird to me that it's only those two when there are many others is all. There are many others. Um, and I think what it would be helpful is actually to get some of those others on, you know, our radar. Um, churches. Yeah, churches mm -hmm. among them, sure. Um, so that's something that all of us could actually do. Um, we might, you know, if, if we did a little bit of a brain dump from for the seven of us who are on the committee now, um, if we went in there and just sort of, you know, add two or three that we know about, um, um, we, we might come up with quite a good list. I mean, there well, may be um, actual organizations referred to in the implementation strategies in the comp plan. I have not gone through and surveyed for them in a long time, but yeah. some are mentioned. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I would be happy with just not giving any examples, not creating more work. I think it's obvious what non-town organizations are. I like that. Mm. Anybody object to not giving examples? No, it's a good idea. Not. Excellent. All right. Thank you, Mark. Mark, deleting. I delete with the best one. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So we are going on to, I think we've talked about C and all of its little subparts quite a lot. Um, initiate a master street planning process. We've just, we're, we're tracking that, but that's really in the hands to some extent, at least of the Bicycle Pedestrian Committee. Um, monitoring the implementation plan. We spent quite a bit of time talking about this last time in terms of how we're already doing that, that there are a couple of tools already set up on the Google Drive. Um, there's a, a, a chart of, you know, chronologically filling in when each of us has meetings 
with departments, committees, boards, commissions, um, making a few notes about that. Um, it will get reported at these meetings and reflected in the notes briefly. So I think you have to. Yeah, I, with your permission, I'd just like to go back to the master street planning process. For uh -huh. Yeah. Um, I think a master street planning process includes more than just cyclists. You know, if you're familiar with the complete streets paradigm, um, uh, that that involves a combination for active passive transportation, you know, on a variety of levels, which um, encompasses more than just cyclists. So I think maybe what we might want to take a look at is um, something that's analogous to a complete streets program where that's appropriate. It doesn't work everywhere, but there are parts of town that would be amenable to um, the adoption of uh, a complete streets uh, regimen, uh, and particularly in new plans of subdivision, for example, but but also linking up parts of the community that, that are currently disconnected. Right, and of course it's not bicyclists only, it is bicyclists and pedestrians, and the point is really to balance because we, for many, many years, we've been very focused on vehicular traffic, um, you know, and and sort of less um, emphasizing. But, yeah, I admit further to that, though, that might be important to note there is a distinction between active and passive uh, transportation. Um, you know, so enlighten us a little bit right mm, now, if you wouldn't mind just what you uh, mean by that. Well, sure. So, you know, um, parents with baby strollers, you know, they are pedestrians, but they're also providing um, a form of activity for their infants and others. Um, there are seniors that, that uh, use mobility devices um, that uh you know would benefit from uh a complete street uh regimen um in the winter time you know there are uses that are related to winter time activities cross country skiing uh whatever so uh, that's kind of where i'm coming from Anybody want to speak to that on the committee? I see Angela's hand. Yay. Um, well, several things are wrapped up in this. I guess I also had a question that we call it a master street planning process. When when I look at the action items under um, the, the section of the strategic plan called Streets for People, yeah. We really refer, refer to it as complete street policy. Is that what this means or is it something different? No, that's pretty much what it means, Angel. My understanding is it goes hand in hand that a complete streets policy is sort of the first step. And we've tried on a couple of occasions to present a complete streets policy. And I think the timing wasn't right um, and we did not have a bicycle pedestrian committee sort of championing that. And just to let you know, half the bicycle pedestrian committee is not interested, is not focused only on bicyclists and pedestrians. They are focused on the whole gamut of motion <laughs> around yes. town, including right. you know, people with disabilities and all of that. But you know, in the interests of finding a title for that committee, this is the title of the committee. But the thing about the, I think a streets master plan is a separate and more, um, I don't know what rigorous process that yeah. would, okay. I think it would help guide the um, Department of Public Works and all of the different, the, the planning. It was sort of taken from Montpelier, Vermont, which mm -hmm. has such a uh, plan. Um, My question really is in the implementation strategies in the comp yeah. plan section, you know, there are dozens related to streets for people and yeah. there are complete streets and a reference to master street planning. 
And I guess I just want to be clear on which one we're saying we want to make progress on in the coming year. And I think what I'm hearing you say, it's master street planning. Well, it, it's actually both. And my my intention in putting this down here on the work plan is to keep this within our sites, but to take it off our agenda, except as we are in touch with and getting updates from and listening to the Bicycle Pedestrian Committee. It doesn't rest only on their shoulders, but they are at the moment a, a not the only, but a champion for this cause. And I think with CPIC being sort of the generalist cheerleader for the plan, um, we welcomed having a new committee be able to focus on streets for people items. Um, so that's that's the intention yeah, and, here. And I, I point out though that in my time- Let's here, just make sure just for a second to, Angela, does that get to your concern or? Well, I think it does, except that I hope my hope is that in the coming of the year, we also make progress on complete streets. I, this is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, and, and what we could do is initiate a master street planning slash process slash complete streets policy to because they, they all go together. They all go together. There's an edit for you, Mark. Thank you very much. I like that. And I wanted to make sure that half has seen the implementation chart where we have all of those strategies from the comp plan in the streets for people section. It's not just for bicyclists and pedestrians. It's quite a substantive section of the comp plan. Yeah, I will go back and review it. Um, what I would also add is that in my time here is I've sat in on um, development application meetings, which quite often involve plans of subdivision. There's nothing that comes close to approximating a complete street that's ever presented as part of those development applications. So there's a gap between the intentions of the comp plan and the way development is being delivered right now. Absolutely. And as I said, we did try to, we presented a complete streets policy mm -hmm. to the select board. It seemed to be very well received with one or two very minor suggestions made. We made those, came back a second time, and there were massive suggestions made. Um, and so we sort of took that off the table for the moment and said, let's um, let's wait until we have a champion um, for this process. Um, it will add to the cost of development. Mm. And that, that will be an issue with members of the development industry. Yeah. And yeah. also it's a recommendation in the comp plan passed by the people of Topsom. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not disputing that. I'm just sort of saying um, currently there's a gap between um, the uh, the intent of the comp plan and where the development industry is situated right now. Yeah, I mean, I think that's true of all the recommendations in the comp plan. They're recommendations because they weren't being evidenced on the ground. Mm -hmm. Many big and gaps. Many. Yeah. But absent regulations that require them to do that, it's not going to happen. That's why we're undertaking as large a project as Recode Topsign. We are our arms around some very big changes here. But we can't do everything at once. So we've got some champions coming on to help us out. They're working at it. They're about five months into their process. I'm going to check in with one of them tomorrow. I'll let you know. Now I have a question. Yeah, and I'm not. Thank you, Susan. I'm not sure it directly pertains, but I've had this concern about affordable housing, and when I heard Hap say that this is going to add to the cost, you know, as beneficial as it will be for the people living in the development, how do we? How, is is that at all addressed in the? Um, I mean, I'm I have my comp plan and. Um, I just I just thought well, I'd toss that out. It is a general rule of thumb 
um, every time you layer in additional regulations, you are you are um, elevating the cost of developing housing. Um, and so, you know, on the one hand, comp plan goes to great lengths to, to speak to the necessity of providing affordable housing. On the other hand, you know, we are um, talking about developing and implementing regulations that will elevate the cost of housing in top of me. So somehow you've got to find a way to balance those contrary objectives. Thank you. And I think overall, the just the, the lack of housing is a problem everywhere in the country. So we're I think we're very aware of that. There's no simple solution, but Maine as a state has undertaken some major um, initiatives. And I'm hoping at some point that we can hear from somebody like John Hodge, who's probably a little bit better plugged in than anyone else, I'm not sure. Um, to see if, you know, in terms of what Maine as a state has up its sleeve um, in terms of affordable housing. The comp plan addresses housing diversity, that we don't have enough of a variety of housing options that can match some of the changes in family structure and population. Um, so there's a couple of things. One is affordability. That's a huge one. But the other one is, you know, different kinds of housing to accommodate smaller families um, and, and well, yeah. on essential workers, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the affordability piece. And hopefully Market Basket's going to get their housing going at some point. OK, any other on this before we move, scroll a little bit further down. Um, so we've talked about the implementation before. Let's see, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anything to add there on the implementation stuff? No, good, okay. So develop succession strategy and continuity. This wraps up this, really this is forward looking um you know this i think it was very wise for the last planning director to kind of build this idea into the development of this particular implementation committee um it i mean i raised this with him at the time of like why is there an ad hoc committee every 10 years and then it disappears and then the, there's a new implementation committee. It, it doesn't make sense in terms of sort of uh, capturing um, institutional knowledge and uh, allowing people who have developed some experience to use that with each other to on behalf of the town. But that's not for this year. I, sh I think that the other um, We've already got our additional member or two that's done. Um, I think we ought to target this probably for 20, 2025 and forward. Is there anybody who disagrees with that idea? My suggestion is that we don't even think about that <laughs> until Recode is a done deal. Agreed. It's an aspirational item. Mm. Well, a lot of the plan is aspirational, but it's, are we going to aspire now or later? I suggest later. <laughs> yeah, I think until the town meeting uh, we're through that phase, I can't imagine right. taking anything else on. Okay. Our editor, would you at the end of uh, six just stick on there a, a dash after knowledge right up there? But the, yep, yep, right there. Um, 2025. And ongoing onward. Perfect. Okay. We are, I, I think this thing is a wrap. Can I ask you one question? Yeah, do, you, do I need to get save anywhere in this? No, because you're in the Google Drive. It saves everything you do. Cool. All yeah. Right. Because I'll just stop sharing them. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So, and so stop sharing there. Um, 
And we've gone through this a couple of times. People have made very helpful comments. We've made some changes. Is there anybody on the committee, doesn't matter if you've just walked in the door, um, who is not comfortable sort of saying this is our work plan for 2023-24? I'm comfortable. <laughs> and cool. is the next step that we're going to find a time to do an update to the select board? Is that the next step? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's because I, I, what I would like to do is give this to them with a cover memo. Um, it's been a few months now <laughs> since we've done an update, and the time has come. I think whether it's the second meeting in April or the first meeting in May one of those two meetings is the right one. You know, there'll be a lot to say. I'll see if I can commandeer some significant time <laughs> on the agenda. Um, I think they will appreciate it and uh, it's time for us to do that. Okay, any other thoughts before we move on? So, our tech sharing screen person, <laughs> Mark, if you, um, our next agenda item is, on number five, Roman number five is community engagement communications framework. And that's also on the Google Drive. It is, it's okay. right on that Google Drive. And um, I think it's- Oh, that's my email. <laughs> we don't want you. Yeah, you don't want that. Let's see. It's, so we probably need to get out of this one then first. Oh, you working. could have probably just um, toggled back a folder. Let's see your back there. Yeah, see if we can. Uh, can you just back up a step? How about if I open maybe another one? Or share with me. Is it called again? Um, well, once you get into the CPIC drive, which I think I am right now, you, but if, if you're not sharing it, so it's it's not showing. We're still looking at your email. No, no, I'm in the CPIC drive now. Oh, I got the my choices are the minutes, the agenda. Um, wait, you, there's a folder communications. Yeah. But you, you should to... stop sharing, Mark, because it's currently showing your email. If you stop sharing and start again, you can choose the community. Yeah. Maybe I'll find it first and then I'll share it. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's what I would do. Yeah. Actually, I probably went back to my email to get the one. Folder share review. That's the. I'm going to leave right at six or we'll leave four days. Yeah. Okay. Maybe after the high school tonight. Okay. What's he got on? Uh, sports awards. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So what we oh, want I'll is... see you there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Great. Excellent. So what you need is the CPIC folder. It's just CPIC because what you've got is shared with me and there's a lot of stuff there. Where is just the CPIC folder? Um, secret communications. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Secret okay. communications, and then you're looking for recode. Yeah, communication plan. Scroll down. Scroll. Keep scrolling down. One more. That right there. Right there. Beautiful. Okay. Now we'll share that. With yes, everyone. that's great. Yeah. And just click onto that other screen. Oh, okay. Yep, yeah, there you go. Are you seeing the right thing now, Angel? I'm not on my screen, no. Um, it, oh, that's I would have clicked on the wrong screen. There we go. Beautiful. That's it. Thanks, Mark. You got it. 
Now, so what I've done is there's a little bit of text and then there's um, sort of a, what do you call it? Like a grid a chart. Um, so the text spells out our different audiences. I think what's really important is for us to be realistic in terms of people's time. I'm so excited to have um, one new member now and two hopefully coming on soon um, because that principle of many hands make light work is real. Um, so most of this you have seen. Um, the thing that's changed is um, under B, uh, capital B, there are lots of different media listed, but at the top are the things that given limited time uh, that I think are our priority. And if we can make sure that updates are available, um, minutes of our meetings, uh, agendas showing what's coming up um, on, on the town website, that's number one. Number two is the crier. And the reason there, I think that the crier is so important is that um, everybody in town gets it. Um, obviously this affects people beyond top some residents, but they have access to the crier as well. Um, I'm sensitive to people who don't have the internet, don't use email a lot. And that, that's number three. Um, we have both the Topson Public Library MailChimp, but we also have, I think, we have uh, a way here to be electronically connected. Do we not, Mark? We have a piece of our website that can do distribution list that people can opt in to sign up for, right. which Pam's still getting some more training, but that will be kicked off relatively soon. Okay. So there could be a distribution list for people that want see pick updates or something. Great, so we could sort of post something about that yep. under the comp plan implementation and direct people to sign up mm -hmm. and that would give them automatic updates. Exactly. Yep. Terrific. So that's my thinking. And this is where I need all of you to weigh in um, in terms of you know broadening my thinking or confirming my thinking. Um, in terms of, uh, do you think this is this is the right way to organize ourselves? Um, Looks like Andy has a question or comment. Andy, jump in. Yeah, um, I see under A three that you do have the stake key stakeholders there: um, developer, yep. community, and landowners affected. One of the things we're doing in, in TDI is uh, on our strategic list is we're going to identify parcels um, that are developable in the community so that we can have that base list. Um, so this 30 to 90 people, who's going to identify that, that list? Is that Are we supposed to come up with a bunch of names or how, how would you like to go about that? Well, it's a list that we can always add to, but to be honest with you, if if you, um, and I, I can sort of show you that there's so much in the Google Drive, it's easy to miss some things, but um, there is a list okay. and it's massive <laughs> um, because, you know, there were at least a couple of uh, community forums there was one on form-based code. Mm -hmm. There was one, um, and I don't remember when it happened, but um, I I got that, the list of everybody who attended that, um, we plugged in those names. I mean, there are people who whose names appear over and over again if you, if you hold a public forum on something that's going to affect Topsum going forward into the future. People show up, and we capture their names, and they're, they're in a grid that we have. And it would be very helpful if committee members could look at that list and, and add to it. You know, we, we captured names of people who attended um, all of the comp plan update sessions. So, you know, there are a lot of names and I believe the planning department has an email list 
Probably. So uh, I'll check it out. Thank you. Yeah. One thing I, I would add is, is I look at some category B there. It is largely digital, although not entirely. Um, and, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, the people in town who are not necessarily digitally literate. Um, and, you know, they may or may not read the crier, or they may or may not read the Times record. Uh, and if they get flyers in their mailbox, a lot of them will just toss it off as junk mail. Um, so how can we reach them in a more substantive way? Um, and what about the possibility of community type meetings and neighborhoods, that sort of thing? Do you do you have the time to help organize those neighborhood meetings? Yeah. I'll, I'll find the time. Great. Great. Um, I think you know, if we continue on in this um, um if you look down into the second section, calendar, it's sort of breaking some of these things down. Um, but maybe, you know, maybe what we need is a, a number four under A, in addition to key stakeholders, town residents, just put them in there. I mean, we're, obviously we're trying to reach them all, but um, I think, you know, what I'm trying to think of is the time that committee members have, the very scarce time that I've seen the planning department staff have, and trying to be realistic as we plan going forward. Um, if people get flyers in their mailbox and don't look at them, I'm I'm not sure. I'm not sure what else there is to be done there. Well, I, I'm 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 just suggesting that maybe there are other ways to engage people. Um, and for example, you know, with the Parker development proposal. You know, Parker and his wisdom decided to go out and speak directly to the people who who are affected about this. And I think, you know, that's a great strategy. Um, and if people's property rights are going to be affected by the recode initiative, I think it's really important to find ways to engage them and communicate with them. Um, and, and speaking to them on a face-to-face -face basis is a great way to do that. We're going to have open houses in person. Okay. That I think is person to person. Okay. Let's um, see in person forums. I'm just not seeing that identified there. It's letter C in person forums. Letter C. Okay. Can you describe the, the open houses with those? I can't describe it now. We're all going to be part of planning it together. Okay. <laughs> I can tell you how the comp plan update committee held, you know, everybody knew about the charrette. It was a five day, very intensive charrette. Prior to that, there were a couple of uh, plan your topsum meetings at the library, very well attended. And then there was a most of the, I don't know if it was, it was not all day, but I think it was sort of like an 11 to 3 session in June at the library. Um, and I'm sure most of the folks here who lived here were part of that. I know you were there, Robin. Yeah. And people at the library had, you know, um, materials all over the walls and people could engage with that and put stickers on it and you know um and I know that people really appreciated that I don't know if this process lends itself to that but I'm hoping to hear from Leslie and Kirk who have done this before um, about how we might actually organize um, an in-person session that will allow people to engage with the material and the changes and enough to understand it, comment on it. That's my assumption. It's a big assumption, but um, 
I think a very reasonable assumption, though. I mean, they're they're the the pros. That's right. That's right. So, any comments before we? Just one small one, yeah. which is that when town meeting is coming and the town puts those electronic signs saying you know, "Miss Town Meeting" or you know, Brunswick does the big banner across Main Street. I think anything visual that you can do that will get people's attention, um, you know, from big banners to posters, you know, can be oh, just another way to reinforce and to develop interest because people are so busy. Yes, right. You've really got to capture people's attention quickly. Um, there might be something we could actually do for this town meeting in terms of you know, sort of what's to come. I don't know. Um, I'm loath to make suggestions because then I end up taking it on. Mm -hmm. um, and there could be a table in the hallway or something if you it, wanted to hand out information or speak yeah. to people as they go in. I mean, I remember at one of the town meetings, um, members of the community center committee we're asking people to, you know, sign up for a survey, to take the survey. You know, they, they, it was a person-to-person -person request process. You know, um, Angela has some ideas. We're going to hear from her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to actually say that too. Um, but in general, I think we need to look at this plan as a work in progress. I feel like it's pretty comprehensive. And what we're able to do is really going to depend on capacity of volunteers and staff and others. And, you know, I feel like this is a good start and we, it will change over time as we get new members on the committee. We figure out if the town has a budget for paying for some of these ideas. Um, so I know I guess I don't think we have to review it to the level that we say this is exactly what we're going to do, but that we put options out there that we think we're going to try to do. Right. Right. So the next section, thanks for Angela. And anything else before we just move on to the next section, which is really calendaring some of the above. Um, the important piece there is, you know, if, if you look at the, it, it captures that, that CPIC is kind of the lead critter on the center of town recode. The planning board is the lead on the chapters that Kirk is working on. That's gonna happen from March, I think, through June, the second meeting of the month workshop. Um, the, the thing that's in here, and it's sort of stuck in in a very sneaky way, you see under B2, prepare and issue progress update release. Um, that's an idea that is not gonna happen unless somebody steps forward. And it could be one of our new members, brand new members, um, could be. Um, instead of maybe taking on a department or a committee commission assignment to take on maybe two people together, take on a, a commitment to once a month, get a little bit of an update together on what's happening so that you know, a little update can happen on the webs on the town website every month, or could go out with the Topsom uh, Mailchimp, which I think comes out every week. So those are that's a seed planted in terms of um, somebody who enjoys being part of the community relations, public relations, communications process. If you enjoy that. This is for you. So what would the form of that release be? Is it something posted on the town website? I think so. It could be that. You know, it could be um, uh, it could be something that would go out in um, the Thompson Public Library MailChimp. We could ask Susan and uh, Cindy to, you know, have a little bit of a uh, CPIC corner in their weekly thing, and then once a month, we sort of put in what's the focus of, um, what's the status of things in terms of our meeting and our workshop, like what's mm -hmm. happening now. It could be just, you know, a couple of bullet points mm -hmm. that would, you know, keep people tuned in. So, I mean, that's 
a thought. But all of this is just calendar stuff, and I'm feeling the press of time, and Andy needs to go. We have 12 minutes. So, Mark, would you scroll down to the little grid? I don't know if this is really helpful, but it's the place that names other than Susan would get put in in that third column of who's responsible. Um, and, and all of this is a work in progress. You know, all of it is a work in progress where, you know, I mean, some people work best alone, don't want to talk stuff out. Others like me, I need to talk stuff out. So I'm going to grab another committee member and have those conversations. Um, depending on, you know, what your interest and time is, you know, two people together could sign up for these updates. What about presenting it in the form of a Gantt chart? Presenting what in the form of a Gantt chart? Um, this, uh, this milestones chart? Yeah. And because because then, then you can see it in a linear fashion. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Instead of over, in left to right, right now what you're looking is top to bottom. It's, the, it's a very similar thing. It's just a matter of... Um, mm -hmm. And but with, with a Gantt chart, you can sort of see the timelines. Yeah, yeah. And I'm very happy to have you do that, Pat. If you, if you are motivated to do that, I think that would be terrific. I will give it a crack. Excellent. This came up in a conversation with somebody I had the other day. Uh, neither of us could remember the difference between a critical path chart and a Gantt chart. Um, is there a Well, um, a Gantt chart is linear, right? And it defines uh, what the objective or the milestone is, who the responsibility center is, mm -hmm. uh, what the, the the timeline is for its delivery, so that you can you can see it horizontally uh as to how all these pieces roll out over time no i love this but we're going to just cut this show yeah, right now sorry. that's all right sorry. um because we only have a couple of like yeah. about 10 minutes um yeah exactly 10 minutes now in so here's my suggestion for this communications piece let's sit with it the important thing for right now is i have signed up for one item it's moving forward you know, we're going to have new committee members. Let's take this up in the future. And we may have a new and delightful format for it presented by HAP. Fabulous. Let's take it up again um, and leave this at the moment. Sound all right? Mm -hmm. Can I throw in one comment? Yeah. Um, so as we dole things out, everyone should follow your model, Derek requests. You, know, you were saying, I'm going to do a draft and run it by the committee. Yeah. Just so that. Not that we'd ever um, change what you want to say, but just so that Derek would have a heads up in case mm -hmm. it's something he needs to give the select board a heads up or something Absolutely. before they read it in the prior. Yeah, or yep. Absolutely. We would do that. And if, if that's sort of a monthly process, it will be very short, yep. you know, which will make it easy for review. Okay. So let's move on to our last item, which is. Roman numeral six, liaison updates. Um, at the moment, the one liaison update is uh, Rick and I met with Derek and Mark. Um, and we it was a terrific meeting. It was a solid two hours. And we went over every item that the town manager has the lead responsibility on. We went over many of the items that the town manager has support responsibility for. And we went over quite a few others because things have, you know, this, the plan um, approved in 2019, um, things have changed a fair amount in terms of the town staff. And back when that plan was, approved, 
we did not have, or we had just begun to have an assisted town manager. That was for, for the, the period of time when the, the comp plan was being updated, we didn't have an assistant town manager. So now we have this really strong town manager, assistant town managers team. They are they have looked at revising some of the other uh, staff responsibilities. And um, so a number of things have changed. And we went over the matrix in quite a lot of detail. And I've put some notes <laughs> right into the matrix because that was the easiest way to do it. So all of that information is available to the committee. What I will also do is fill in that little chart about who meets with whom, the when and the what. I'll put in a little bit of um, a summary of what, I, what was significant. I'll run that by Rick to make sure that I captured what was the most important. Um, but, you know, it, uh, here's, here's my big takeaway, that relationships and trust and process moves forward at the pace it moves forward. And we have found some very serious traction. And that felt really good um, because you know the plan is being taken very seriously enough so that you know some responsibilities have been reassigned, things related to speed limit, you know. Don't go to the planning department. They have to do with the police department and MDOT, but starting off with the police department. So th there are some important updates there that we got. Um, I think other meetings of interest coming up, uh, I always think of the select board and the, the planning board as the two is there anything we should be mindful of with TDI, Andy, um, in terms of, um, I know you guys meet quarterly, so you don't meet, and if you, and I usually tune into TDI just as I've missed a meeting, so it's like. No, we, we, we meet more than quarterly, and, and, and we're actually stepping up our game a little bit, too, so right. um, I will keep you, certainly keep you posted. Our biggest issue has been what is our strategy what are our strategic plans moving forward and we've just identified a, a list and we're going to narrow that list down i think our next board meeting is maybe even wednesday i think it's wednesday morning uh-huh okay so that would be the 15th um so maybe on our next agenda you could give us a little bit of an update on where that stands yes I can. does that make sense great yes Perfect. Okay, I think we're gonna wrap up a couple minutes ahead of time. Anybody wanna say any parting thoughts? I just wanna encourage Pete to get that application in. I'm gonna follow up with Margaret Williams. Um, we will have a really strong committee here. It's always been terrific. All of, to, you know, from my point of view, just working with everybody. Um, but now that we have more experience and new people on board, I think it will be, we'll have some really effective ways to take action. Okay, let's sign off two and a half minutes early. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thanks, everyone.